Hey guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2024 BMW M440i Convertible. And a big thanks to Julian at BMW of Tampa for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium or performance vehicle in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Julian. And for those of you guys who don't know, the 4 Series has been a series of compact coupes, convertibles, and liftbacks sold by BMW since 2014. That's when the first generation was released. The second generation that you see here was released in 2020, facelifted for 2022, and updated again this year for 2024, featuring updated iDrive 8 with a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and a 14.9 inch touchscreen. We also get a new toggle gear selector controlling the 8 speed ZF automatic transmission in the center stack. The M440i convertible that you see here starts a tick under 70,000 bucks. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your full LED headlamps with LED daytime running strips. The LED daytime runners are outlined in crystal and the projector bulbs with the high and low beam are outlined in this blue trim material and says BMW laser LED right there in the corner. We have full front parking sensing, functional airflow in both corners. I like this bronze trim for the grill. We also get bronze trim for the mirrors. We'll check that out in one second. We get the old school BMW badge, not the updated 50th anniversary like we had in some of the 2023 models. And this tanzanite blue metallic paint color is about a $1,500 option, but it is beautiful. We also get a front facing camera helping us out with the 360. The 360 is part of the parking assistance package, costing us around 700 bucks for this M440i convertible. The wheel and tire setup, we get an additional side sensor helping us out with the 360. We get these gunmetal gray 19 inch rims, dimensions being 225, 40 R19s. These are Goodyear Eagle F1 summer performance tires. These 225s aren't the widest up front, but they're a offset setup with 255s out rear. And we'll check that out in one second. Four piston M performance brake caliber, pretty aggressive body color rocker panel side skirt area. Additional camera on the mirror helping us out with the 360 and it's a bronze matte mirror with an LED turn signal on it. Blind spot monitoring on the glass, black trim for the window trim, and of course we get the convertible. We're gonna leave the top up for most of this review. I'll demonstrate how to drop the roof with a click of a button, but for the drive, we're gonna leave it up so you guys can actually hear what I have to say. We get smart access for the driver and a front passenger. As you mentioned, we get an offset rear wheel and tire set of dimensions out rear being 255-35R19. Still the Goodyear Eagle F1 tires, so we'll see if these 255 wide tires are enough to put this 382 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque to the ground. My 2021 Camaro LT1 with a 6.2 liter V8 making 455 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque uses 255 wide tires and it's it still has a little bit of wheel spin, but for the most part, it is enough. Out rear, we have an additional side sensor, not a functional heat extractor, but it does look aggressive and it adds to the hip design for the rear end of this M440i. We have full LED for the taillights, turn signals, and reverse light, LED third brake light. Shout out BMW of Tampa for helping make this review possible. The backup camera is part of the BMW badge. We have the M Performance exhaust here for the M440i and a pretty aggressive diffuser in between them. But speaking of the M Performance exhaust, let's fire up this three liter straight six turbo and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the B58 three liter inline six cylinder turbo sold by BMW for the 2024 M440i convertible. And it actually sounds really good with this M Performance exhaust. We still have the old school 48 volt mild hybrid system, not updated like the 2024 X5 and X6 or X7 and 7 series as well, which cranks out 375 horsepower with 398 pound feet of torque. Here, we make more horsepower at 382, but a little bit less torque at 369. Still enough to get this almost 3,900 pound convertible to 60 in under four seconds, making it a no joke performer, faster than two generations ago M3 with that high revving V8 motor, which didn't really make a lot of torque, but it made a ton of horsepower. What you see is basically what we get. We get struts connecting our chassis to the strut tower braces and additional supports in front of the radiator and intercooler, but you can't see right now because we get active shutters here for the M440i. But anyway, we can shut this hood right down. The hydraulic struts are appreciated. We can walk around this front end of this 2024 M440i convertible one more time and then hop inside, see what we get 
with about a $75,000, $76,000 price coming out after about three, dollars $4,000 in total options. The first option, of course, is this booming Harman Kardon sound system. I believe it's about a $700 option. Yeah. Full leather trim right up top with white contrast stitching, full leather in the center, and full leather gushy soft armrest. Four window auto on touch, two person memory seats, power folding mirrors, and they're four way adjustable. Aluminum door handle, lock and unlock, and a trunk release right down below. Really large aluminum M step in plate or name plate as we step inside. The seats are faux leather, but they're still very comfortable. They're just as comfortable as genuine leather and they're fully adjustable. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide, adjust the bolstering, and adjust the thigh support. Taking a step inside, we can really check out what we got going on in this updated 2024 BMW M440i. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is the steering wheel. It's the M Performance steering wheel, super thick, really fat tenant to bolstering notch. It's not a flat bottom like we see on some other 2024 M steering wheels, but it's still a huge thumbs up, one of the best in the business. The horn area is also leather stitch trim, BMW badge in the center, the horn itself. Pretty aggressive sounding horn, people will definitely be getting out of your way. We don't get dual pane windows, but it's a really thick single pane of glass. On the left side, cruise control, we get radar cruise here on the right side, volume and skip controls, hang up and answer your phone calls, and adjust the infotainment and voice commands. We also get a heated steering wheel, and it says M right down below. The infotainment adjustments, right now we're looking at this display. You can press this button to adjust the content. We can check out the trip data, route preview, a map at all times, G meter, media radio, and that's the last screen. So my personal favorite would be the map, so we'll leave it there. Layout, you can adjust between the first layout, second layout, which shows the power indicator versus a tachometer. And down below, all we really see is a digital speedo on the left side and a large map display. My personal favorite is this first display, which gives us 160 mile an hour speedometer and a 67-ish 100 RPM red line for the tach. Down below, we get traffic sign recognition, fuel level, clock, and on the right side, temperature outside and the coolant temperature. The stocks have a really satisfying click to them, auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers. To the left of the steering wheel, you can see your auto headlamps, interior brightness, and your parking lights, aluminum trim, and some interior lights surrounding the air vents. We get some faux leather stitch trim for the dashboard and BMW's all new 15 inch heads up display. And you can also adjust the heads up display with these controls. So you go over to the right one more time. And now the heads up display is adjustable. Hopefully I can pick it up for you guys on camera. We have the regular view. Down below we have a map, sport view, reduced view, and that's the last one. So my personal favorite would probably be sport view, so we will leave it here. We can return right back to the original zoom. I mentioned the 14.9 inch touchscreen. I'll take this piece of paper off of the mirror visor. Hopefully I can do so without completely ripping it off. But the 14.9 inch touchscreen with the climate menu right down below. So this is why a lot of people don't like the iDrive 8 system because you have to actually press a specific button in the touchscreen to adjust the infotainment or climate. But it's pretty easy because they leave you those buttons for the temperature display at all times. So if you leave it in auto climate, it's fine. It's just personally, I don't like to leave it in auto climate. I wanna adjust the vent to my liking, which involves me to take my eyes off the road for at least a second. But the gesture control and voice commands here are very advanced. You can simply tell them to make the fan speed heavier or softer and it should listen to you. Continuing along though, we have heated seats, no ventilated seats for this price point. Ventilated seats would be nice. The map has great response. Check it out. Responds literally just like an iPhone back and forth. Huge thumbs up for the iDrive 8 in terms of response. The home screen, you can see the song, telephone, personal assistant, traffic on route, my BMW route preview, and you can add whatever widgets you would like. The home screen or the app screen, you can see all the apps that we have available here on the M440i, the infotainment apps and the vehicle apps all can be looked at separately. We have a phone too and the navigation. This is my personal favorite to leave that out at all times. So we will leave it here. We get genuine wood trim beneath the dashboard, aluminum underneath that, more aluminum surrounding these air vents, some soft touch rubberized material for the bottom part of this dashboard. Volume and skip controls get hard buttons, sort of the defrosters and hazards. Some faux leather stitch trim for your knee will often hit, more genuine wood for the center so that you press this button and it exposes a wireless charging pad, USB-A port, and a 12 volt. You can fit two 24 ounce water bottles in there with no problem. We mentioned the updated toggle gear selector for the eight speed automatic transmission. You can turn off your traction control, you check out the cameras at all times with the click of a button. So here we have a backup camera with the wide view. You can press one more time and it returns us to the home screen. Check out the actual backup camera, put the car into reverse. Now we get guidance lines and trajectory and a 360 also with guidance lines and trajectory. You can check out different views, the 3D view. You can see everything that's surrounding your M440i convertible. It's interesting that it's got the top down right now 
but in real life the top is up not a big deal you can also see the car wash view which gives you a there we go over the top little guidance line and trajectory for the front facing camera awesome you throw it right back in the park unfortunately we stay in the camera screen you got to actually press this home button to return but the reason they do that is because check this out if you open your doors the 360 camera actually accounts and shows you there's cars coming your way i wonder if it'll close the door for you i doubt it but it'll definitely give you an alert if anything is coming away to sweep your doors away but again as you mentioned my personal favorites look at, at all times would be the navigation so we'll leave it there you turn off your parking sensors if you'd like to for one reason or another engine start stop buttons aluminum sport comfort and eco pro mode we'll start the review off in comfort transition to sport or we'll start off in sport transition to comfort and just see what the differences are electron parking brake with auto hold and our dial to adjust the touchscreen if you want to put fingerprints all over the shortcuts right up top back and option this button right here controls the convertible top so you just press down and hold all the windows come down it takes a second as you see out back it prepares the roof to be put into the trunk it's opening up the trunk now it's opening up the roof to put into the trunk nice pretty quick process that all took less than say 15 seconds and also if you want to put the roof back up say it's a rainy day and you're like oh crap the rain's coming you can just pull over to the side of the road press and hold the roof up and within 10 seconds you will have a roof over your head nice and once we take it out for a drive we'll see how the insulation is because with soft top sometimes there's a little bit more wind and road noise but bmw usually does a really good job with their convertible tops so i'm not too worried overall we'll lift these windows right back up they're an auto one touch same thing for the back also really nice luxury features unfortunately there's no window sticker here for this 2024 m440i they had one in the showroom but unfortunately i wasn't able to take it because it was actually glued to a platform but the total price here is about 76,000 bucks. The base price is around 69. We get a ton of options here. We get the parking assistance package, the upgraded paint color, the upgraded sound system, and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other features that I'm not mentioning. That's about it though for the front seat, guys. Let's hop out back and see how much space is offered back there. Remember, this is a coupe, so don't expect it to be super spacious. The materials down here are rubberized, but not super soft touch if I didn't mention. But the back seat space, let's hop out back and check it out see the seat actually slides forward automatically as soon as you recline the seat forward we'll take a step back here i'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and once the seat comes back i probably won't have any room but headroom wise my head is definitely in the ceiling i have a, about an inch half an inch of knee room they are starting to get squished but for a short trip i'll be fine unfortunately my shoulder is like beaming into this side pillar the materials are great we get this leather eye trim up top Harman Kardon speaker it's just this armrest is tiny I can't even fit like I could fit like two fingers on here not even my two fingers are wider than this armrest so really not the most comfortable for somebody that's my size for a long trip but they honestly did the best they can they gave us great materials back here air vents with a third zone climate control in a back seat of a sport coupe or a sport convertible that we have here the bolstering is decent thanks to this little center pillar it keeps you in your place pretty well two cup holders you'll fit about 24 ounce cups and a child car seat latch right behind it we don't get map box to be on either of the front seats headroom as you mentioned isn't the best if you're under five foot eight five foot nine you should be fine back here but if you're six feet tall you probably won't want to sit behind your own seat settings for a very long trip if you're comparing bmw sport coupes like the 240i or the 440i and you are leaning towards the 440 because of the back seat space because you need full-size adults back here you're not fitting full-size adults back here at least not comfortably we can hop out into the cargo space see how much space is offered back there because remember this is a convertible we're probably going to be sacrificing a decent amount of trunk space the trunk opens up automatically it doesn't close automatically but that's a nice feature how it just electrically shoots up and as you see not a whole lot of trunk space you lose at least half the practicality compared to the coupe and definitely the lift back but it's still enough to fit maybe a golf bag horizontally thanks to those wheel wall cutouts depth wise those seats do fall down back there but you won't fit anything more than like a 35 40 inch tv because that outlet or cutout is very small but to be expected you usually lose a decent amount of practicality when you go for a convertible we can shut this trunk right back up or down walk around this 2024 bmw m440i convertible one more time it's a beautiful car performance wise is fantastic luxury wise we have a ton of features especially with this updated iDrive 8 system with a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and the 14.9 inch touchscreen performance wise we're still making the same power as last year 382 horsepower 369 pound feet of torque and speaking of that let's take this 2024 m440i convertible out for a drive 
and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 updated BMW M440i convertible. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. Starting off in sport, about third throttle. Oh. Oh, lightning quick shifts and it pulls so hard. This is one of the most underrated power plants in the business, like for 382 horsepower to get a vehicle this weight to 60 under four seconds. It has to be underrated. As soon as we get the chance, we'll try out an acceleration run. Hopefully nobody creeps up behind us so we can give some distance and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right guys, taking a step out here, we can try out an acceleration and on the gas. Ooh. Good Lord. Yeah guys, this thing can pick up speed really quickly. I can see zero to 60 happening in under four seconds. This is a very fast vehicle. It's not even an M4. I've never actually driven an, actually, yes, I did. I've driven an M4 and it was fast, but this is like almost just as fast. Like you pick up speed in the highway with barely any throttle. We're still accelerating. We haven't even broken 2000 RPM and it's a BMW on concrete pavement going highway speeds. It is still super quiet in here. The steering still feels very on center. We can try out some rub match downshifts. You can't really pick them up on camera, they're not very loud. You can pick up that exhaust note with a little bit of burbles. <laughs> it is a quick, quick vehicle. One more downshift. Try one out from second gear. Let me guess. Oh. Wow. The way that this turbocharged six cylinder pulls up top, it's almost like a naturally aspirated engine, but then watch this. Oh, yeah. Most naturally aspirated engines don't build power that quickly. This turbo six, holy crap, that diesel. But this turbo six is an absolute powerhouse. I'm a big V8 guy, I love V8s. But if I had to choose a six cylinder that I had to be stuck with, I, I wouldn't even call this being stuck with. This is still such a fantastic power plant. We can take a step out here, start it off in first gear again, and okay, it took us out of manual mode, but okay, first gear on the gas. Oh, the torque is just ridiculous. Then you got the old school three series right in front of us, convertible, third gear. Oh, it just pulls so hard, pulls, pulls, and pulls at any RPM. You lean into the gas pedal and you're making really impressive power, guys. We can try it out in comfort mode. We don't have to beat it up a whole lot further. It keeps us in the manual shift, so you gotta press and hold the right paddle shifter for a couple seconds. Everything becomes significantly quieter. The steering is lighter, but it's still on center. Still takes barely any gas pedal to keep your speed consistent and the brakes still feel just as sharp. These four piston M performance brakes, they're not Brembo's, but they're basically Brembo's with the four pistons and they feel really good to the foot and it slows the vehicle down instantly. Partial throttle in comfort mode, still feels very torquey. Give these guys a little bit of distance because it's pretty congested right now. Maybe try a half throttle pull in comfort mode. Okay, we got a little distance, about half throttle. Oh yeah. This is just such a powerful beast. I prefer the way it sounds in sport mode, but after a long day, you want to blast your music and not have to hear the engine fighting over your stereo. This pretty impressive Harman Kardon stereo. Throw it into comfort mode and everything becomes significantly quieter. At highway speeds, you don't hear any wind noise. This is a soft top convertible. Listen, I don't hear anything. When we were on that concrete highway going about 70, you didn't really hear anything outside of a little bit of road noise because it's concrete pavement. What do you expect, especially with these paper thin sun performance tires? But as far as wind noise, this rack top is isolating this car from the road no worse than the coupe or liftback would. Overall, guys, if you're looking for a luxury performance car, performance coupe, I would definitely recommend checking out the M440. I would almost recommend checking this out over the M4 because you're making about eh, 100-ish less horsepower, about the same torque but the zero to 60 times are within two, three tenths of a second of each other. Is that worth the extra 25, 30,000 bucks for the M4? Personally, I don't think so. You do a tune, thousand dollar tune on this M440, you're gonna be making 500 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of torque, and you'll be doing zero to 60 
in the low three second range. So honestly, you're looking for performance luxury coupe. I'm recommending the M440 or the M240 because both of, both of them have the same power plant, about the same interior space, and you can save about 10, 15, maybe even 20,000 bucks for the 240. But if you want the larger vehicle, you like the looks of the 440 better, I would definitely recommend checking this one out, maybe over the actual M4. And a big thanks to BMW of Tampa for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new premium performance car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Before you subscribe, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.